Welcome to the capstone lesson of chapter five. In this lesson, we will learn about a special type of reaction called a formation reaction. A formation reaction is like stepping into God's kitchen to make a substance out of individual elements. In the second half of this lesson, we'll combine our knowledge of formation reactions with Hess's law to calculate the enthalpy of any imaginable reaction, even those which are impossible to carry out. So normally, when a chemist wants to synthesize a chemical compound, we'll use a clever combination of compounds we already have on hand. For example, if you wanted to make a mole of ethanol, you could take half a mole of glucose and feed it to some hungry yeast cells who would ferment the glucose into a mole of ethanol and a mole of carbon dioxide. But imagine if your kitchen didn't have any glucose or hungry yeasties. Suppose in your kitchen, you only have the fundamental building blocks of the universe, individual elements. Undaunted, you rummage through the drawers and gather your supplies two moles of carbon in the form of solid graphite, three moles of hydrogen gas, and half a mole of oxygen gas. Combine them, stir, and hopefully you'll end up with one mole of ethanol. This reaction is called the formation reaction for ethanol. A formation reaction is the reaction which forms one mole of the target substance from the elements in their standard states. Every element has a standard state, which is the most stable form of that element at 25 degrees Celsius. Most elements are monatomic solids. That is, they're just atoms on their own, not forming any kind of compound. Some of the nonmetals exist as gases. And remember that team Brinkelhoff elements are diatomic, for instance, O2 and N2. The only liquids in their standard states are bromine and mercury. Lastly, the standard state of carbon is graphite, not diamond. Sorry, ladies. All right, time for a practice problem. Write the formation reaction for sodium nitrate, including states of matter. Pause the video here, then I'll go over the solution. Well, the first step is knowing the formula for sodium nitrate, which is NaNO3 solid. Sodium nitrate is an ionic compound, and ionic compounds are nearly always solid at 25 degrees Celsius. Next, fill in which elements are needed to make sodium nitrate. We need sodium metal, which is a solid, nitrogen gas, which is diatomic, and oxygen gas, which is diatomic. Lastly, we'll add coefficients to balance the reaction. I only want one mole of nitrogen, so I'll put one half in front of dinitrogen. And we only want three moles of oxygen atoms, so I'll put a three halves in front of dioxygen. Bet you didn't know we could do that, huh? Every formation reaction has an associated reaction enthalpy called the enthalpy of formation. The enthalpy of formation for sodium nitrate is negative 446.2 kilojoules per mole. The symbol delta H subscript F means a formation reaction. The little circle to the upper right means standard state conditions of 25 degrees Celsius and regular atmospheric pressure. Hardworking chemists have derived the enthalpies of formations for thousands of different compounds. A few of them are compiled on page 187 of your textbook, and there are many more in the back of the book and even more on the internet. We can use these enthalpies of formation to calculate the enthalpy of any chemical reaction involving compounds with known enthalpies of formation. To see how this works, let's calculate the overall reaction enthalpy for the fermentation of glucose into ethanol and carbon dioxide. I know from experience that the process of fermentation releases heat, but can we verify that with our calculation? To see how this uses Hess's law, I've written the formation reactions of each compound to the right of its formation enthalpy. 
As in the Hess's law problem from the last section, our goal is to assemble the fermentation overall reaction from each of the reactions written in the box. The first thing I realize is that I need half a mole of glucose on the reactant side. So I flip the fermentation reaction for glucose and multiply it by one half. I do the same for glucose's enthalpy of formation. Next, I know I need one mole of ethanol on the product side. So I bring down the formation reaction for ethanol along with its enthalpy of formation. Lastly, I need a mole of carbon dioxide in the products, so I bring down the formation reaction for carbon dioxide and its enthalpy. If we add all the reactions together, we get this mess. But don't panic. You might notice that three carbons, three hydrogens, and one and a half oxygens cancel out from both sides of this equation. Check it out. If we remove the species I just canceled, I get the reaction for the fermentation of ethanol. And the overall reaction enthalpy is exothermic, just as I predicted. This process is very useful because we can determine the cost of any reaction without actually having to measure it in a calorimeter. On the next slide, I'll introduce an easier equation to simplify the application. This slide shows a visualization of the process of using enthalpies of formation to calculate any reaction enthalpy. If we take the negative enthalpy of formation for the reactants, it's like we're reversing the formation reactions, decomposing the compounds into their fundamental elements. From the fundamental elements, we can use the formation reactions of the products to turn them into the final compounds. This means that the overall reaction enthalpy can be calculated using the equation in the yellow box. Note that that weird zigzag letter E is the Greek letter sigma, which just indicates we add up all the enthalpies of formation of the products times their stoichiometric coefficients m, and then we subtract the sum of all the enthalpies of formation of the reactants times their stoichiometric coefficients n. Don't worry, this will make more sense when we practice it. So here's your practice problem. Calculate the enthalpy change for the oxidation of ammonia using the enthalpies of formation to the right. Now, if you look at this table and you think that oxygen is missing from the list, don't worry, that's not an omission. If you're still confused, try writing the formation reaction for oxygen. All right. To get to the solution, we'll add up all the enthalpies of formations for all the products and subtract the enthalpies of formation for all the reactants. Make sure to multiply each by their stoichiometric coefficients. So NO needs to be multiplied by four, water needs to be multiplied by six, and NH3 needs to be multiplied by four. Then plug in the values from the table. Note that oxygen is already in its standard state, so its enthalpy of formation is zero. When you plug it in, you get negative 906 kilojoules per mole. That's quite a bit of energy, but it makes sense that it's a large exothermic value since oxidizing compounds with oxygen gas usually generates quite a bit of heat. <laughs> 